sit down and fall down. Amen. Praise God forever. Amen. Glory be to God. The kingdoms of this earth belong to God and His Christ. Amen. His presence is strong here this morning, isn't it? Amen. I say His presence is strong here this morning, isn't it? Amen. If you'll acknowledge His presence with your lips, more of His presence will show up on you. Amen. That's why your pew mate's getting all blessed. And you're like, oh, what's going on over there? Open up your mouth. Your voice is your address in the Spirit. I say your voice is your address in the Spirit. Welcome Him to your address. Thank you for coming here. Amen. Thank you for dwelling with me. Thank you. Oh, God, I bless you. Oh, you're so good to me. You're so kind and wonderful. Of all the people in the universe that you can come visit, here you are visiting with me this morning. That's why I came this morning. I love y'all with everything that's in me. Amen. But I came this morning because I knew he would show up. That he would show up because the Bible says where two or three gather in his name, he is there. And so he is here this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. And, you know, if you'll, if you'll get in and enjoy it, I know, you know there's, the Bible says that there's a river that flows from the throne of God. Yeah. Amen. Ezekiel saw it. He said, and, you know, some will get in and out to their ankles. Yeah. Amen. Listen to me. That has to do with your prayer life. Yeah. And some will get in up to their knees. Listen to me. That has to do with your walk. Yeah. But some... Some will go all the way in and allow the Holy Spirit to carry them along. Amen. Amen. And that's who we as the church are supposed to be. We're supposed to be filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit and carried along by the Holy Spirit where our lives are submitted and yielded to Him. Amen. And He'll bring us to places you never thought of going. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He might bring you to that cubicle mate. Just to say, hey, I wanted to bless you today. Here's a cup of coffee and a donut. Amen. What? <laughs> yeah, just wanted to be a blessing to you today. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, uh, you'll be, listen, I love doing this. You get into the drive through at Dunkin' Donuts and pay for the people behind you. Oh, yeah. oh that's one of my favorites. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, let's mess with you. You get into the grocery line. And pay for the groceries of the people behind you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I can't afford my own. There's the issue. We have to yeah. get you to the place right. where not only are all of your bills met, all right. of your needs supplied. Right. He said he'd do it. Yes. Where all of your bills are paid. That you have plenty left over to be a blessing to somebody. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. 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 And sometimes he'll have you step out when you feel like you can't do it. You know, it always seems to be the most inopportune time in the world to sow seed. Amen. We're going to get into it today because we've been, dis we've been discussing righteousness, haven't we? Yeah. Are you getting anything out of it? Yeah. You see, you should be getting something out of it. That's why we're here. You should be getting something out of it. The Holy Ghost should have been revealing to you all along that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And you can't make God love you any more than he does right now. That's right. And in his eyes, in his view, you are perfect. Amen. Woo! That's shouting ground right there. You go, me? Perfect. Any idea how messed up I am? Yes, yes, he does. He knows exactly how messed up you are and chooses to love you anyways because of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. Hallelujah. Well, let's welcome all these fine folks out there on those various social media platforms. Thank you for joining us this morning. It's a privilege and an honor to minister the Word of God to you. But we want to invite you to join us here at 28 Amen. Chapel Street in beautiful downtown Wallingford, Connecticut. Amen. Amen. We'll make you most welcome on Friday nights at 7 and Sundays at 1030. Amen. And if you're just tuning in for the first time or this is your first exposure to our ministry... All of our messages are put up online, www.faithbiblect.org. Amen. Amen. Has all of our messages up there. Uh, unfortunately for you, we started filming them because I have a face for radio. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But they're up there nonetheless, and you can get caught up, or you can listen to them over and over again. Amen. Amen. And get strengthened in this arena. Amen. So we saw two weeks ago that the disciples saw something in Jesus' prayer life that forced them, if you will, to ask Jesus this question, will you teach us to pray like yeah. you do? Yeah. Amen. And we saw in Matthew's gospel that Jesus said, well, don't pray like the heathen, use in vain repetition. Right. right? And then he goes on, he says, when you pray, pray in this manner. Or like this, this is how, this is the model for how you should pray. Father who is in heaven, acknowledge who he is. Yeah. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses and we forgive those who sinned against us. Know who you are in relationship to him. He is your provider. Yeah. Right? And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Know who your enemy is. Yeah. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Some of you like that one. Do you know why you like that? Do you know why you like that? Do you know why that resonates with you? Your spirit is bearing witness for his is the kingdom yeah. and the power and the glory forever. And it is truth and it bears witness with your spirit. That's why some of you like saying that. It's like, oh, for thine. Yeah, we'll, even go, we'll even go Elizabethan English on it. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of Amen. 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 Hallelujah. But Jesus warned, don't use vain repetitions. Didn't he? Yeah. The four things we took away. Know who your father is. Listen to me. Father, know who your father is. Right. Know who you are in relation to him. Right. Know who your enemy is. And know how to worship Amen? Yep. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to jump in now that you've got it all. I want you to go to Mark's Gospel. The first chapter and the 40th verse. Amen? And please understand that we are setting a foundation down. We are putting a pillar down in your life. When I asked the Holy Spirit, okay, we're going to go back to this again. And he said, yes, we're putting a pillar down. Our people, Faith Bible Church, our people must have it settled who your Heavenly Father is and who you are in relationship to Him. Somebody say, I'm His child. I'm Do you believe it? Yes. yes. You see? You see? Do you hear it? Mm -hmm. It's a firm yes. yes. That's what the Holy Spirit is getting across to us. You are his child. Yeah, right. You cannot get God to love you any more than he does. Right. Did you know about the love of God? <laughs> Can I describe it to you if I could? It's white hot. Mm -hmm. It's fervent. Mm -hmm. It's infinite. Yeah. It's eternal. <clears throat> it will chase you all the days of your life. Amen. 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 The love of God will pursue you all the days of your life. But God is always looking to do good in your life. Amen. Can you get to the end of eternal? Can you get to the end of infinite? Can there be anything hotter than white hot? No. Come on. That's the love of God. Towards you right now. And there isn't thing one you can do to change that. For I am convinced that neither height, nor depth, nor principality, nor power, nor spiritual wickedness in height, but there's nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Amen. Thank you. Somebody say nothing. 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 This is the subject of righteousness. This is why we went down that road with you at the end of the last series and coming into the beginning of this one. I'm just a terrible sinner saved by grace. That was the truth. You were a sinner, and you were saved. If you're a child of God now, now you're a child of God. You're a saint of God who also sins. There's a difference. I no longer, uh, I no longer carry the guilt of sin. 
I no longer carry the stain of sin. I'm no longer under condemnation of sin. What? You don't know what I did on the way to church this morning, Pastor. No, I don't. I don't. God does. And let me ask you a question. Can the blood of Jesus wash it away from you as if you never did it? Okay, then you're a child of God. Washed in the blood. Listen, the devil is out there. You've got to know who the enemy is. He's out there convincing Christians you're just a terrible sinner. You'll never amount to anything. And the reason that it's going so wrong for you right now is God doesn't love you very much. You're such a terrible sinner. Anybody? Oh, that's the right attitude, isn't it? He loves me in spite of myself, in spite of my shortcomings, in spite of my sin. That was anointed spit, by the way. God loves me. You know we got something going when the pastor starts flying cotton early. <laughs> it's like, thank God he sips a lot of water. <laughs> the front row is a splash zone. <laughs> Amen. Are you there in Mark's gospel? Yep. Yep. In the first chapter and in the 40th verse, this is who you were. Yeah. Somebody say was. 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 A leper. Mm -hmm. An outcast. Mm -hmm. Society wanted nothing to do with you. Well, not modern society. Modern society says anything goes. Mm -hmm. Just speak your truth. Live your truth. Walk your truth. Mm -hmm. Except they're not walking the truth. That's right. Are you listening to that? Mm -hmm. Wow, you're being harsh and judgmental. No, 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 no. I have to give you the truth because it's truth right. that sets you free. That's right. Right. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Truth says, you know, listen, we start talking about these issues. Truth says, when I was a drug addict, that I deserved to die and go to hell. Mm -hmm. But when I repented, yeah. when I came into the kingdom, the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ set me free. And that's now the message that we bring to the whole culture. Amen. Even when it doesn't want to hear it. You know, you just live your life and I'll live mine. Well, that, that's fine, but here's the challenge that we have. I'm not dying and going to hell. Well, I'm a good person. And this is the issue. Society teaches as long as you're a good person. You have access into the kingdom of God. If that's the case, Jesus didn't have to come bleed and die. Come on. He didn't have to. If good people who pay their taxes and don't beat their spouses and don't beat the dog and go to work and pay their bills, right? If, that, if that's the case, then Jesus didn't have to come and bleed and die. The truth of the matter is, is that, you know, I saw this sticker once upon a time, born okay the first time. Right? <laughs> yeah, it took me a few minutes, few minutes to catch on to that, right? And now I see a new one. It's born in parentheses with squared next to it, you know, born again. I love it. What am I saying to you? The Bible teaches that you're born in sin. That because Adam sinned, that nature's in your flesh, right. right? And you're in desperate need of a savior from the moment you're born, right? right? You, listen, have you ever told a lie? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be the only one. <laughs> have you ever stolen anything? Yeah. Yeah. Ever judged somebody? Yeah. Ever criticized someone? Yeah. Yeah. Ever gossiped? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> then you are qualified for hell. <laughs> Check the box. Jesus came, hung, bled, and died for all of that. Amen. And when you confess him as the Lord of your life, that gets washed away. Yes, and you become born again. Society teaches that you're born okay, and you're taught these terrible things. Listen to me. You leave a child to their own devices? Come on now. I see it. In the grocery stores. Right? Little three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old kids running the family. I want to give you You know what? You want? You want? <laughs> Here's what you want. <laughs> yeah. My Uncle Michael called it a bee at the point of the ear. That's what you want. 
My Uncle Jim would say you're broom bowled for want of a beat. <laughs> what does that mean? Long overdue. <laughs> Right? Stomping around, having their little temp little balls of flesh, having their temper tantrum. And I wish we could leave it at the two, three, four, and five-year-olds. But I've seen 50-year-olds. I've seen 60-year-olds. Dear God, now I was at a minister's conference, and they ran out of coffee. Well, they didn't run out of coffee. There was a pause between the first pot and the second pot. And, and pastors standing in line. Gee, do you think they're going to bring on another cup? Oh, I hope there's more coffee. I, 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 I can't function just on one cup. Now, this time, we make fun of the pastors. If you can't function without coffee, there's something wrong with the movie. Right? Yeah. Wow. wow. Put down your stones. Let me get behind the pole. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't understand, pastor. <laughs> no, no, no. You don't understand the power of blood. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Are you listening to me? Uh, hallelujah. We were outcasts. And we came to Jesus, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. We said, heal us. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. But here's the leper's position, if you're willing. Yeah. And that's the position of the church with this false doctrine regarding yeah. righteousness. Yeah. Is that we don't believe that we can come to God and say, forgive us. We don't believe, if it be your will, you'll heal us. If it be your will, you'll forgive us. If it be, and it's the position of the church. And here's Jesus' response to settle the matter forever. He settled it 2,000 years ago. Yeah, yeah. I am willing. willing. And he healed him. That's right. Amen. He healed him. You need to know who your father is and who you are in relationship to him. He is willing to heal. He is willing to forgive. He is willing. He is somebody say it. He is willing. 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 He's willing. He's willing. How do I know he's willing? Because the Bible back in the time of Christ, if you were a leper, you weren't allowed to be touched by nobody. Matter of fact, you lived on the outskirts of town. I find this interesting. You see, you have to read the Bible, and then you really need to get involved with the culture of the time. They actually had special roads that lepers traveled on. Come on. See, everybody else could travel on this road because they were righteous and holy, you know, and full of religion. Jesus called them whitewashed tombs filled yes. with dead bones. Right. Yeah. And they made another path for those that are left. No, they didn't even make the path. You're not allowed on this road. You're unrighteous. Make your own way. So they actually had lepers walks or lepers paths or lepers roads. One of two things happens here, folks. You see, you're not getting it. You ready? Either this man broke everything and was walking on the same road as Jesus or Jesus had taken the lepers road. Wow. <laughs> 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 Light dogs! Ah! Jesus got down where it's ugly. Yeah. 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 Come on. Yeah, come on. Come on. He got right into the mess and the muck. Do you remember Lazarus? His good friend who had died? Yeah. And he shows up and everybody's weeping. And Jesus is looking on the scene and everybody's weeping. And his nose is telling him. Yeah, that brother's gone. <laughs> this is not stink anymore. It's stank. There's some stank coming out of that. You, you smell that putrefaction? <laughs> Aren't you glad Jesus wasn't moved by his emotions? Yeah. Right. By the people weeping and crying. Right. The Bible says that Jesus wept. Right? And, and, you know, I've heard religious people trying to explain this. You know, it's the shortest sentence in the Bible. Jesus wept. Oh, Jesus wept. Oh, he was moved. He was, oh, Jesus wept. Oh. Well, listen, if Jesus knew that he was coming to raise the dead, why do you think Jesus was weeping? He was going there specifically to raise Lazarus. He knew. He knew. He knew who his God was. He knew who he was in relationship to God. He knew who the enemy was, and he knew how to worship God. 
So if he's showing up, come on, and his buddy's dead, he's showing up to raise him from the, why do you think he's weeping? Doubt, unbelief, and religion had buried his friend. Yeah. And he was moved with compassion. That we heard about this this past week. Something about being moved right. with compassion. Right. Did you hear it? Did you see it in the scriptures? And Jesus says, "Roll the stone away." Yeah. And they're talking about man. He'll stand, listen, they will stand. You know, you're not, that, 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 I'm charged. Jesus doesn't care how smelly your life is, how yeah. terrible you become, yeah. how low you sunk, how dead you are in your sin right. and destruction. He doesn't care. Right. Roll the stone away. Uh, we're going to get into this today. I find it amazing that Jesus almost always asked people to be involved in his miracles. Yeah. Here he says, you, you do what you can. You do what you can. Here's what you can do. Roll the stone away. Yeah. It's the same for every unbeliever. They have a hard heart. Ezekiel says, I'll take out the heart of stone and I'll replace it. Listen, you've got to move the stone out of the way and let Jesus come yeah. in. Amen. See, you've got to do something about it. You've got to take a look at your life and go, it really does stink. Yeah. Yeah. You know something? There's something wrong with this movie. Right? I... I it's amazing to me, having come from the lifestyle that I came from, how after a while, it all seems normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, a crack house seems normal. A bar seems normal. Come on, it all just seems normal. Come, come on, it just seems normal after a while. Lying seems to be the norm. I was told by a business coach once upon, once upon a time, listen James, I know you're a Christian, but if you fly straight in a crooked world, you're going to crash. I said, no, sir. I will fly straight. I will not lie. I will not cheat. I will not steal. I will not. I will not. I will not. Right? And if that means we lose the deal, not a big deal to me because I got my, the one, the one that I serve, my God, the one that I serve will see to it that I am cared for. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Who am I talking to this morning? I'm talking to somebody this morning. Right? Because the enemy has convinced you, even here in this room, even though you're watching me out there on that television, the devil has convinced you you're not good enough. That you are too far gone. You've been buried for too long. You've been in that lifestyle too long to come out. Roll away the stone. Yeah. Amen. And allow the master to come in. Amen. Thank you, my Lord. Jesus said this out loud. He said, Father, I know you have heard me. Did you see that? It's in the past tense. I know you have heard me. He's already got this settled. Lazarus is already coming out of that tomb. Why? Because Jesus has already asked. And he already knows that God has heard him. He already knows. You see, you must know who you are in relationship to your father. You must know who your heavenly father is. And you must know this. Death has no authority over you. Amen. Amen. Oh, <laughs> death has no authority right. over you. Amen. And I'll take it one step further. Sickness is limited death. Right. Sickness has no authority over you. Yep. Right. Are you listening to me? Amen. He said, Father, I know you've heard me, yeah. but for their benefit. Right. Yeah. Amen. For whose benefit? It's written to us. It's written to the early church. It's written to the Jew that wasn't believing so that, so that they know. So that they know. So that they know. So, somebody say, I know. So that they know that you sent me. Lazarus, come forth. Uh, take Lazarus' name out of there and put your own name in there. Make that Bible come alive to you. That you you're dead. You're in that tomb. And he called you out. Amen. Thank you, Are you Jesus. listening to Thank you, Jesus. I have it in my office. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Tony asked for, you know, what, what, what are some of the governing principles? What are some of the, from the early church leaders, what, are, what, are, what is something that they said, a quote that governs what you're doing? I have it hanging in my office. Charles Spurgeon, I have come here today not in the hopes that by through speech or through preaching that some might come to know him. 
I've, my, my, my hope lies in another quarter. My hope lies in grace. Amen. That he will stand in front of the tomb of their life and say, not you. I claim you for myself. You belong to me. My hope lies in Christ. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Those early church fathers, those early church leaders said, if you don't have Christ in your sermon, you haven't preached. Are you listening to me? It's all about him. It's all because of him. Are you listening to me? You're here today because of him. Hallelujah. So in Colossians, in Colossians chapter 1, in verse 12, the Apostle Paul is praying. And he says, thank you, Father, as you have made us eligible to receive our portion of the inheritance given to those who are set apart by the light. You're receiving your inheritance, right? Because you've been set apart by the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have rescued us from the dark powers and brought us safely into the kingdom of your Son, in whom you love, and in whom we are redeemed Amen. and forgiven our sins. Amen. Somebody say, I am redeemed, I am redeemed. And, I am and I am forgiven of my sins. So who is Jesus? Amen. Right? Who is Jesus? Verse 15 starts this explanation. He is the exact image of the invisible God, the firstborn of creation, the eternal. It was by him that everything was created, the heavens, the earth, all things within and upon them, all things seen and unseen, thrones and dominions, spiritual powers and authorities. Every detail was crafted through his design. Let me stop there at that period and say, does that mean that Jesus created Satan? Yes, he did. Except Satan was Lucifer. Lucifer was an angel of light. Yeah. Lucifer was in charge of the worship around the throne of God. Right. And then the Bible says iniquity was found in him. Mm -hmm. In other words, he caught a vision of himself. And he said, I am impressive. Mm -hmm. And he was. The Bible in Ezekiel describes him as the most beautiful. Know who your enemy is. That's right. He was the most beautiful of all of the created angels. His body had precious stones in it. When he walked, he made musical sounds. He was like a whole orchestra. When he, he was a whole choir when he walked. And the Bible says that his job was, I'm the one that walks among the stones. Amen. He was the one that walked around the throne of God. He was the one that was in the throne room of God, covering the throne of God with praise, covering the throne of God with glory. Isaiah saw it like this. He said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and there was two seraphim. Somebody say two. Yeah, two. And they were crying back and forth, holy, holy, holy. You see, God reveals himself in three. Why is there only two seraphim? Well, one lost his place. Wow. Yeah. One lost his place. Lucifer lost his place yeah. and was thrown out and became twisted and evil and everything that God is. And listen to me. Here, this is why deception, you have to pay attention. Right? Everything that I teach needs to be out of the Word of God. and needs to be backed up by the Word of God. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Because if it doesn't line up with the Word, you need to throw it out. Right. Amen? Yep. Deception is so powerful, one-third of the angels followed him. Wow. That's right. They were all in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> they were all in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. That's how powerful deception is. Wow. Yeah. That one-third of the angels followed. You want to know where all the evil in the earth comes from? It comes from that. Those fallen angels and Lucifer, his name changed to Satan. Do you know what Satan means? Liar! <laughs> That's what it means. It means liar. Right? And we're going to get there in Genesis. Right? You see it in chapter 3. When Satan approaches, somebody say Satan. Satan. You see it wasn't Lucifer. He's lost his position. Right, right. Satan approaches Eve and says, has God said, has God said, you shall not eat? She said, yep, we're not allowed. We're not, we can eat from any tree we want to. Is that the truth? Yep. We're not allowed to accept that tree right there. And that day we shall, we shall eat. We don't touch that tree because the day we do, we'll die. 
And in Genesis, he says, you shall surely not die. That was the first lie that was ever spoken. And the word father means initiator. Jesus called Satan the father of lies. There was never a lie spoken until Satan said, you shall surely not die. It's not the truth. And I would like to point out to you that Satan will never challenge what God has said. He doesn't want you. He can't get you to doubt what God has said. Mm -hmm. Right? Couldn't get Eve to doubt what God has said. Could he? Could he? What did God say? Don't eat from that tree. And she added, don't touch it. Are you ready? What Satan always tries to do is to convince you that God won't do what he said. You try that over here, then I'll listen over there. Yeah. He'll always try to convince you that God won't do what he said. Right. Are you listening to me? God is a healer, but not you. God is a forgiver, but not you. You know, God performs miracles, but not for you. And have you ever noticed this? Satan will never contend with your last miracle. How many have ever experienced a miracle? Yeah. I mean, there was, it was, come on, right? Yes, we're all walking miracles. We are. You are all terrible sinners, and you're all saved right now. <laughs> that in and of itself is a miracle. Yeah. Satan will not contend with you over that. He'll always contend with you over God's next miracle. Yeah, he did that for you then, but he's not going to do it for you now. Yeah, because you're, right. you're terrible. You're awful. You're no good. Come on. Yeah. Listen, we're pulling the covers off in this morning. Why? You need to know who he is. Yeah. The same tactic. I like to say it like this. Satan, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His tactics have not changed since the garden. Yeah. Are you listening to me? And there's a reason why those tactics haven't changed. Because they work. Because they work. Deception works. The Bible in Genesis 3 says, The serpent, who was more crafty and more subtle, than all the other fields, or all the other animals in the field. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Holly, I'd like to go down this road. Can I parenthetically insert when the snake spoke, Eve didn't freak out? <laughs> hmm. I wonder, I wonder if Adam and Eve could speak to animals, and if animals spoke to them, and when the animals spoke to them, they didn't freak out. Right. right. Apparently not at all. <laughs> because let's face it, if they didn't understand snake, <laughs> and the snake started talking, if you were Eve, come on, ladies, <laughs> there would have been a rock on top of it. <laughs> Apparently, it was no big deal. <laughs> Why? Because she engaged him in conversation. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, <laughs> who is Jesus? <sighs> Verse 17, <clears throat> Colossians 1, 17. He has always been. It is his hands that hold everything together. He is the head of his body, the church. He is the beginning, the first of those to be reborn from the dead, right. so that in every aspect, in every view, in everything, he is first. Jesus was the first person to be born again. Right. And if Jesus says that you must be born again, that I don't care what religion teaches in the earth, I don't care what philosopher you're reading, Oprah, <laughs> well, yeah, I know, don't speak ill of Oprah. Listen, if Oprah wants to stand on a national stage and say there's lots of ways to God, then I'm going to refute that and say there's only one way to God. And Jesus said it. It wasn't some philosopher, it was the master, the head of the church, he said, no one comes to the Father except through me. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. So Jesus had to do and taste everything for us. Aren't you glad? Yeah. He was the first that was born again. Yeah. He is the head of the church. He's the head, we're the body. The head gives the orders, the body carries it out. Just like right now, your body is listening to your head saying, I wish he would finish soon. <laughs> it's the 4th of July. <laughs> 
I sure would like to go home now. <clears throat> Never happens here at Faith Bible Church. <laughs> Ever. Hallelujah. Why? Because you're more excited about leaning in and listening and learning from Him. Amen. 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 Listen, the stake will be there. I promise you. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. The hot dogs will be there. The hamburgers, they'll be there. Amen. The pool will still be green. Praise the Lord. <laughs> he is the beginning, the first of those reborn from the dead, so that in every aspect, in every view, in everything he is first, God was pleased that all of his fullness should forever dwell in his Son. What is the work of Jesus? I'm glad you asked. It's right here in verse 20. Who, as predetermined by God, bled peace into the world by his death on a cross as God means, as God's means of reconciling to himself the whole creation, all things in heaven and all things on the earth. Are you hearing me this morning? Yeah. The work of Jesus is he bled peace into the earth. Amen. Verse 21 says, you were at once at odds with God, wicked in your ways and evil in your minds. But now he has reconciled you Amen. in his body, yeah. in his flesh, through his death. So, somebody say so, so. that he can present you to God, Amen. holy, blameless, Hallelujah. and totally free of imperfection. Hallelujah. Somebody say, holy, holy. Blameless, blameless, and totally free of imperfection. Amen. That's who you are. That's the work. Amen. That's the work of the cross. Amen. You have been totally, completely Hallelujah. forgiven, Hallelujah. redeemed. Amen. You are as sanctified and as holy as you can get Amen. in the eyes of God. Now, in your flesh, do you still sin? Somebody say yes. Yes, I do. Right? But the Bible teaches us then that when, you're begin, when you begin this born-again life and you start living from the inside out, you start crucifying your flesh and you make yourself holy. What? Yeah. yeah. You make yourself holy. I know this yeah. really, I hear theological carts being tipped over mm -hmm. all over the country. Mm -hmm. Has yeah. Jesus made you holy on the inside? Your spirit is born again and is perfect before yeah. God. But your flesh will still want to do what it wants to do. Yeah. And it is right. your job to crucify that. That's, yeah. you, you can be tempted to sin. Right. But Satan can't make you sin. Right. Amen. He can only tempt you. Right. He can only dangle it out there and say, listen, it's just a little lie. Yeah. You don't know. <laughs> Let me try this over here. I was talking with my girlfriends. It's just a little gossip. Did you hear what? It's just, it's just, it's just a little. It's just. It's just <laughs> I'm just saying what everybody else is saying. <laughs> just see something that looks like it, <laughs> right? You know, men, right? Pornography. It's just, it's just, it's just a little. Who's gonna know? I'm not hurting anybody. The teacher in school said it's okay, it's natural, it's healthy for me to be doing They said it in science class, it must be true. It's okay. I'm 13 years old and getting a warped view of a men and women relationship. It's okay right. for a 13 year old girl to, come on, it's okay. It's all right. Shh, don't worry about it. Did you know pornography is not mentioned in the Bible? But gossip and lying are? Right. Think about it. Right? When I used to start talking about pornography in the pulpit, it was it was hysterical here. Faith. The women were like, <gasps> "That's terrible. That's disgusting. That's horrible." You know. And you were talking to Susie yesterday about Joe. <laughs> come on, come, come on. You're out there yip yapping and running your lips and sharing. Yeah. Oh, listen. I actually I share this in confidence. Don't tell anybody else. <laughs> right. Listen to me. The Bible says we're to crucify that. And every time you do, let me help you. Every time you do, it becomes easier. Every time you do, it becomes easier. Right? 
I can walk into any bar, any crack house. Come on. It has no effect and no pull on me whatsoever. 0.0. 0. 0. Are you listening to me? I'll let that go. Praise the Lord. Crucified flesh is how you begin to sanctify yourself. So, this tells us who Christ is and the work of Christ. And we're the direct beneficiaries of the work because we believe. Amen. The gift of righteousness, holy, blameless, and totally free from imperfection. Yeah. Can you take a little more? Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. So Jesus' first miracle in John chapter 2 is at the wedding in Cana. You've all heard the story. For time's sake, I'm not going to give it to you. Right? They, what I would like to point out, what I would like to highlight is that Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. Mm -hmm. People wanted Jesus there. Mm -hmm. right. Amen? And they ran out of wine. Are you listening to me? They ran out of wine. Now, I know that there's preachers that will turn backflips that will talk about, well, Jesus didn't make wine. Okay. Well, why don't we just let the Bible say what the Bible says? Right. They ran out of wine and Mary came to him. This became doctrine in, in the Catholic Church. Right? You pray to Mary because whatever you ask Mary, she'll go to Jesus, and whatever she asks, Jesus will do. Except <laughs> Jesus teaches whatever you want, whatever you pray for, ask the Father in my name, and I'll do it. Okay, so there's the truth. That's why you come out on Friday of the Art of Prayer. We're right. teaching along these lines. Yeah. So Mary goes to him and says, Hey, listen, they've run out of wine. He says, Woman, it's not my time yet. In other words, my ministry hasn't started yet. Right? And she turns without even, I, I love Mary. When I get to heaven, I have a conversation where he's like, didn't even pay attention to him. Just turned away and said, listen, whatever he tells you, go ahead and do that. You want miracles in your life? There's the key. That unlocks miracles. Whatever Jesus tells you to do, go do it. Just go do it. Don't hesitate. I'm getting ahead of myself. Just go do it. So, the Bible says that there was six Water pots, they hold 20 or 30 gallons. Let's just say they hold 20 gallons. Six times 20 is? 120. Hmm. Okay, we won't go there just yet. Somebody say six. Six. You know, the number of men. Yeah. You know, when you come to the end of yourself and your dull, colorless, tasteless existence, right? Just bland water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, fill the pots up. Now, you must understand, they didn't turn a spigot on. <laughs> right? No such thing as running water. Running water is somebody carrying water. <laughs> yeah. right? So there's the running water. So they're running back and forth to the well to fill these pots up. They fill them all up, don't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. Something about an earthen vessel mm -hmm. being filled with water. Right. I can talk to you about how Amen. you're an earthen vessel right. and you're filled with the Holy Spirit of God, but you're still dull and tasteless, mm. colorless, and that's not the Holy Spirit, is it? Right. But when you have an encounter with God, and he changes you from water Amen. into wine, oh, yeah. which is joy, oh, unspeakable, yeah. and somebody help me preach, yeah. full of glory! Yeah. And now you become an outlet yes. yeah. of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost for everybody else to sip. How do I know this? Because without asking, without telling, he said, listen, just take it to the feast master. The service didn't even question it. They just dipped the label in and said, okay. That guy over there said, bring you this pitcher of water. <laughs> they let you know they're going to lay it off on Jesus. Be gone now. <laughs> yeah, that guy. Yeah, him over there with the roll. Yeah, that guy. He said, yeah. He said, go ahead and fill it up with water and bring it to you. And the feast master says, you know, usually... They bring out the good stuff first. And when the people are good and drunk, they bring out the, the lousy garbage, but you have saved the best for last. I'd like to talk to you about how we're the last generation. I'd like to talk to you about how we're supposed to be filled with light and filled with peace and filled with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Well, doesn't that mean Jesus gave, gives us a license to get drunk? No, not according to the Bible. The Bible says those who practice drunkenness have no place in the kingdom. Right. Mm. Let me try that over here. They're not listening yeah. over there. Galatians says those who practice drunkenness yeah. 
have no place Amen. in the kingdom. That's right. Well, you know, Jesus didn't make real wine. That's not what the Bible says, folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're all trying to holify Jesus. Jesus knew how to have a good time. Oh, some of you are planting your holy feet and staring at me. <laughs> Jesus knew how to have a good time. Yes. He didn't say get drunk and fall down. Right. His servant Solomon said, those who stare long at the cup, looking at the, will see strange things and utter perverse utterings. We used to call alcohol the truth serum, right? You get somebody bomb, get them loaded up, and then whatever's in there, come pouring out. Yeah. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Mm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Again, I'd like to point out that Jesus invited people to get involved with his miracle. Yes. So I saw three things with regards to righteousness. He'll never ask you to do something that you cannot do. He'll never ask you to do something That's right. that you cannot do. Right. If you reason about it, you'll talk yourself out of it. Right. Yeah. I didn't say it wasn't going to be hard. It was probably hard work running back and forth with that. It might have been out of your way when he said go visit so-and-so with a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. But he never asked you to do something you can't. Right. It would yeah. seem that the idea behind miracles is you do everything <laughs> you can. And when you get to the end of yourself is when he steps in. Right. They did everything that he asked. Right. They filled, according to the Bible, they filled the pots to the brim. So there's the last piece of this puzzle. Whatever he tells you to do, do it all the way. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, specifically in the arena of finance, I know this is how Cindy and I learned some of this stuff. When he says, okay, um, I'd like you to sow X amount. And you look at the bank account. And the bank account is a dollar more than next account. Because <laughs> he knows what you have in there. Yeah. Now, can we do it? Sure. Would it, would it be a, a challenge in the natural? Uh huh. How many of you know it'll be the most inopportune time? Right. Some of you are said he wants to raise two thousand dollars to build a church roof in Haiti, and I can't pay my electric bill. Mm -hmm. But what I'm suggesting to you is that you go home and get before the Lord, and ask Him what your part is. Right. And whatever your part is, Amen. if it's a dollar or a thousand dollars, whatever your part is, Amen. you do it to the full. Right. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and, and here's what I'm going to not even suggest to you. As you grow in these things, the numbers just keep getting bigger. <laughs> I have it in my heart to sow millions of dollars to the ministry that launched us. I, put, I was here praying one day, and I had a whiteboard out. I put it on the whiteboard, took a picture of it, sent it to Cindy, and said, it just agree with me. It's a, it, listen, it's a ridiculous number. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah. But we're going to, I see it, or I've already done it. I've already written the check for $10 million. Yeah. I've, I've already written it. It's already done. Are you listening to me? In my heart. Mm -hmm. huh? Holly? Yeah. I'm there. Okay, yeah. I'm there. Let's do the reverse. When I went into Teen Challenge, and Cindy sends me a letter, and I have two lawsuits against me. Somebody say two. 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 Yeah. Oh, and I haven't paid for the Sears bill when I got my car fixed. Oh, and the baby needs, you know, because James is three months. Oh, and um, oh, and uh, oh, and uh, and I wrote it all down. And I was just like. It was a Saturday afternoon. The Lord liked to do me on a Saturday. I don't know what it was about a Saturday afternoon. That's usually when I had time to myself, I guess. And it was just like, I don't know what to do about any of this. It's okay to be honest with God. Yeah. Right? But I'm going to suggest to you that you get that vocabulary out of your mouth. I don't know. The Lord dealt with me about that. As long as you're confessing, I don't know, you won't know. Right. But I didn't know that then. I said, Lord, I don't know what to do about this. But the Bible says to cast all my yeah. care, including the baby. Listen, that's a big one. Come on, I'm talking to the men. When you've got a little boy, a little girl at home, and they're counting on you. Right? And, and 
you're going to go away for 12 months? Who's going to take care of the baby? My wife rightly pointed out, you weren't taking care of him before you went. There, there was truth to that. I was taking all my money and spending it on drugs. I know you're all, listen, you're all, you're all, you're all your halo's all crooked on your horns this morning. Come on. But the devil's working me. Right? You need to go home. You need to start working. You need to take care of that baby boy. She'll tell you. He never missed a meal. He never wanted for anything. He was wearing, what was it, little Carter's? He was wearing the best of the best. People were just showing up with it. Right? And we had these wonderful in-laws. I had wonderful in-laws. They just they took care of him. Uh, he was safe. I knew he was going to get pasta anyways. <laughs> but listen, I, I'm being transparent. I didn't know what to do. So I just said, Lord, you have to take care of all this. I crumpled it up and I threw it in the trash. And when I ended up coming home from the program, one of the lawsuits had gotten dismissed. The other one, instead of this much money, said, we'll take this much money. And almost immediately. Why? Because I did what I could. And he did the rest. Yeah. I'd like to tell you that we went out to Oklahoma, to, out to Bible school. We were 30,000 in the hole. It was a big number. I think it was 30. Let me say 30,000 going to Bible school, right? Two years later, he had canceled half of it. Amen. By the time we came home, we were just about debt free. Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you listening? What, what, what were we doing? The whole time, right? we're tithing, we're giving offerings. We were offering, we, we give offerings to different ministries that were ministering to me, ministering to her while we were out there. Come on now. Well, you're a poor Bible school student. You should listen. This is what we were being led to do. It was five dollars of this one, and five dollars of that one, and five. It was somebody say five bucks. Oh, wow. You see, you say five bucks is not that big of a deal. It was to us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We go, we go to Walmart, and it'd be eighty-three dollars in the bank. And they remember that the calculator be on the bar, the carriage, and we would spend eighty dollars because you needed three bucks to keep the account open. Yeah. <laughs> listen to me. Those listen to me. Those days are long gone for us. Yeah. Long gone. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? He's good to us. We are doing our part. He does all the rest of it. Right? So there's three reasons, and I'll, I'll stop because I got another two pages here. There's three reasons why people fail to get miracles. And remember now, we're tying this all to righteousness. Knowing who your father is and who you are in him. There's three reasons people fail to get miracles. Let me say three. They don't obey God. He says, so a dollar. He says, buy a cup of coffee for somebody, and we won't. And, and, and uh, this argument. Well, Lord, let me win the lottery, and I'll be such a blessing. Right? I'll write uh, a check for three rooms for Haiti. Jesus said, no, you won't. Jesus said, if you're not faithful with little, you won't be faithful with much. You listen, some of you want to know, want to know, know the, 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 the secret? You want to know the, the, the way to get much? Be faithful with little. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, if you, listen, if you won't buy somebody a cup of coffee just because God said, hey, listen, just be a blessing to them today. You should be the owner of that franchise. Yeah. But man, you won't go buy a cup of coffee in it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So number one, three reasons people fail. To get miracles, they don't obey God. Number two, they reason their way out of it. The Lord says to do something, and they say, well, now's not a good time. You know, if I had a little bit more, and the devil will see to it that there is always an opportune time. Don't you know the economy in Connecticut is bad right now? Don't you know jobs haven't come back? Don't you know there's a Democrat running the state? Listen, it doesn't make a difference who's in office. You're not hearing me this morning. I've, got, I've, I've grown weary as a minister and as a man of people running the state down. Oh, let me try that again. Boy, I tell you what. Do you know what kind of doom, gloom, death, and destruction you're speaking over the state you're living in? Oh, it's quiet in this Presbyterian church. Oh, no, it's Listen, it doesn't make a difference who's running the show. 
We're supposed to be running the show. Yeah. You know, the Christians. Yeah. Those that call Jesus Lord. Right. Amen. We're in charge spiritually. Amen. But we want to blame somebody for our laziness. Mm -hmm. You see, we go around demanding our rights while abdicating our responsibilities right. to pray for those that are in leadership. Yeah. Do I agree with everything they're doing? Absolutely not. But you will not, you could beat me, and you will not get me to speak against the state that I live in. Right. Amen. It's coming up. Amen. Higher. Yes. It's getting better. Yes. Oh, financially. Right. Amen. Spiritually. Yep. Amen. The Lord told us to be faithful with little, so let's be faithful with Chapel Street. Right. A good witness to our neighbors. Right. Right? A beacon of hope for the town of 47,000 souls, Wallingford. Amen. But why stop there? Right. Are you listening to me? You want to help me out? You want to help yourself out? Start praying for those Amen. that are in authority. Amen. When's the last time you fasted for Ned Lamont? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I, I got this dartboard with his picture on it. <laughs> Come on, somebody. When's the last time you prayed for the state legislatures? When's the last time you asked the Lord to raise up godly men and women to serve him in public office? Amen. Listen to me. All across this country, the only way you're going to change, listen to me, only way you are going to change the face of the country, the church, is through prayer. Amen. But you see, you don't believe in prayer. If you did, you'd be here on a Thursday. Yeah. Prayer makes tremendous power available. I'm convinced beyond all convincing that COVID in the United States, the death toll should have been millions. But the church stood up and took its place. Amen. Were they telling us uh, a year and a half or two years ago that it would take three to five years to develop a vaccine? But all those geniuses at Pfizer and Moderna, they all did it in a matter of months. Listen to me. It was the Holy Spirit of God that inspired them, that showed them the code. Are you listening to me? That they were able to develop a vaccine in months. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Oh, let me just parenthetically insert. You want to wear a mask? Go ahead and wear one. You don't want to wear a mask? Don't. You want to get vaccinated? Go ahead and get vaccinated. You don't want to get vaccinated? Don't. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> You're still not coming out to Friday night prayer or Thursday night, but come on. <laughs> <laughs> right? Come on now. We're supposed to be running the show. Amen. Are you listening? Right. Three reasons people fail to get miracles. Number one, they don't obey God. Number two, they reason themselves out of it. Yeah. Or number three, they don't pursue it all the way. Right. And I mean with everything that's in them. Amen. If you truly believe that prayer worked, yeah. we were talking about this uh, on Thursday night before we started praying, where these quote-unquote old-timers would go to somebody's hospital bed and pray in tongues yeah. all night long. Mm -hmm. I shared the story of a man whose son was hit by a car. His neck was broken and his back was crushed. He was going to be paralyzed from the neck down. If he survived at all. We're talking now back in the 50s. So this is before we even had the types of medicines and treatments and things that we know now. And so when his father finally got in to see him after they had done the surgery, and his son is in a head-to-toe cast, and unconscious, and they're not sure if he's going to regain consciousness, stays next to his bed all night long, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praying in tongues. Yes. And when the morning came, his son's eyes were open. Before his son could utter a word, he said, listen, just believe with me, just agree with me. There's nothing wrong with your neck. There's nothing wrong with your back. Hallelujah. Just agree. And they sat there in agreement in prayer. And the doctor overheard him as he was coming into the room. And he said, listen, sir, you're filling him with all bad information. 
His neck has been broken. His spine has been crushed. We did the best we could. If he goes home at all, if he survives the next few days, he will be paralyzed from the neck down. And he said, no, sir, he will not. His neck is healed. His back is healed. And began to argue with the doctor. You see, not that the doctor, by the way, was wrong, but the doctor's looking in the natural. He's gone past natural into the supernatural. Now, he could have said, well, the doctor said, so I'm sorry, son, you're paralyzed. That's it, you're cooked. And that would have been reasonable, now wouldn't it? But he wasn't reasonable. You see, the kingdom suffers violent. The violent take it by force. He could, he could be reasoned out of his faith. So finally, after going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, the doctor said, x-ray. And the doctor said, no. And back and forth, back and forth, I'm giving you the Raiders Digest version. They finally wheeled him down, they x-rayed him. They couldn't find a thing wrong with his Amen. neck, with his back. Wow. Couldn't even find where they went in. Hallelujah. Cut him out of the cast. They kept him overnight, just to be sure, you know. <laughs> but then the next day, his son walked out of the hospital Hallelujah. with him. Yeah. You say, well, that was then, this is now, right? We know much more now. Are you listening to me? We are the righteousness of God in Christ. We know who our Heavenly Father is. Is there anything too difficult for Him? No. He can heal anything, can He? Right. Stage 4, doesn't matter. Amen. Incurable, there is no such thing as incurable to the Christian. Impossible, there is no such thing as impossible to the Christian. The Bible says all things are possible to him or her who believes. Do you believe? I better let you go. Stand your feet and lay out that prayer.